Two weeks ago, All Costumes Ranked made its return by covering the mentor and one of the more popular characters in terms of design, Raiden. Today, we're probably looking at the most iconic female fighter of the series, Melina. This icon has quite the diverse set of costumes, ranging from the sexy to savagery. So today, we're ranking all 22 of Melina's costumes, from the worst to the best. Fight! Good morning, afternoon, and evening everyone, Nick here, and welcome to or welcome back to the channel. If you have a knickknack for fighting games and are new to the channel, click the subscribe button for more Mortal content. With the popularity of this character to appear on the channel, along with the new Invasion season focusing on Melina, it only seemed right to cover her. This character has quickly become a fan favorite and one of the more recognized MK fighters. Many non-MK fans even know who this character is, she's just that iconic. In case you're new to this series or need a reminder, here are the rules for this series of these ranking videos. Rule number one, I'll only be basing off the original costume from a title. If it's repeated, such as classic skins remade as DLC, that'll only count as one placement. Rule number two, for this video, I'll only be looking at costumes that appeared in the games, so I won't be including the costume from MK Annihilation or the 2021 movie. Rule number three, I'll only be going off the base designs without gear or color alterations, meaning the gear pieces from MK11 and MK1 will not be factored at all. And rule number four, no story exclusive costumes. In the final chapter, you can run into a few weird variants of Melina, and none of those will be included. But with the recent launch of Melina's invasion season, Dark Empress will be included as it is now playable. There is a lot to break down when it comes to this character, and I couldn't do it alone. So today, I have partnered with, or I guess my cameo for today, is cosplayer Just Ya Liz. Hi guys, and oh, how you doing Nick? Thank you so much for having me today. I'm really excited for this. Thank you for joining me today. And with that out of the way, let's grab our veils, our pair of sai, and toothpicks to get the meaty bits out of those sharp teeth as we rank all 22 of Melina's costumes across the entire Mortal Kombat series. Big hot take incoming at number 22, but probably the most popular costume in Mortal Kombat 9 is my least favorite, that being Melina's Flesh Pits costume. Like seriously, like what is this costume? I know this is supposed to be pure fan service, but this comes off more like fan fiction if you ask me. My biggest issue with that is that it really ruins what Melina stands for. She dresses sexy as she's jealous of the hideous monster mouth that she has. Now that it's fully out while wearing close to nothing, pretty much ruins the purpose. There's also really nothing that shows this is Melina, maybe outside of the makeup. Actually, wait a minute, who applied the makeup while she was being experimented on? It's also a very risky costume too, so much so that I have to blur a majority of this segment because they'll think that it's actual nudity. I'm not even playing this game with YouTube right now. Yeah, what else do you have to say about this, Liz? Lots and lots of skin on this one, which is not a problem. I like sexy, uh, but does it make sense for ninjas? Not so much. It's lovely, uh, but not practical in my opinion. Yeah, with that, this is probably the worst Melina costume, by far, and I'm sorry to all the fans that really love this one. This was just never one I really appreciated. Bumping ahead at the revised version of MK4, Mortal Kombat Gold with Melina's base design. Just like your CG animated ending, this costume's pretty ugly. This takes a similar design approach to her UMK3 design, but it's a little bit toned down with less detail to it. Not just in terms of graphics, but also in art design too. As I mentioned when I talked about UMK3, K3, the laces are removed and it also just makes her look a little bit more thin. Like her proportions are just extremely awkward. Also her face model looks really weird for the time too. Base design MK Gold Melina is pretty classic, effective and simple and for its time not bad. As you can see this one really didn't age well. Her first jump into the third dimension wasn't the best. And speaking of 3D we are moving on to number 20 and with her second 3D debut being MK Descent with their alternate design. Now I know many people really like this design, unfortunately I'm not one of those people. To start with the positives, I really like the veil and I also like the hair that goes with this design. I even like how they remove the gloves from previous designs instead going with some bracers on her wrists. And another cool addition is the wraps around her biceps, which is nice. Unfortunately the rest of the costume I'm not the biggest fan of. I feel the team really focused on making this costume look more attractive, but in the process they made it look less practical, like you really wouldn't see anyone fight using this. There's not a whole lot of coverage on her that would act like it's armor. It rather looks like something you'd see at like a nightclub or something like that, not like you're ready to 
fight. The boots and heels also look fine as well too, but my biggest issues stem from the torso and waistline pieces that are attached to this costume, or lack thereof, there's barely anything there. It's got some nice concepts, but unfortunately the biggest aspect of the costume is what drags us down solo on the list. We're sticking with the 3D era and looking at the spin-off game, Mortal Kombat Shaolin Monks. Though she has a very brief moment in the story, she does appear twice, one in a fight between the three ninjas and one in a secret fight. Unfortunately, her design in this game is pretty underwhelming. Some of it reminds me of her base design from MK Deception with the veil and the ponytail and the top that she has, but it really tones it down by removing the sleeves and going with a more basic design with this one. There are less patterns added to the loincloth or even the sleeves and top that are in the MK Deception design. It's a real shame since her other design is really good and they could have just gone with that for this game. Unfortunately, they just removed a lot of the details with nothing to really make it stand out or pop all that much. It's honestly just pretty generic, which is honestly upsetting because Melina is one of the cooler characters in the entire series. This reimagining doesn't leave a lot to the imagination, unfortunately. We are invading at number 18 with the new Invasions costume for Melina, the Order of Darkness variants. With the season of the Huntress dropping February 28th, the one thing many criticized were the costumes. Though the seasonal ones are very rough looking, Order of Darkness isn't on the same level, but I don't think it's that great. My biggest issue is that it comes off extremely unfocused in its design. For positives, I really like how the hair looks and the headdress that she has with it. It just looks really pretty. But the rest of the armor is a huge hit or miss for me. For one, the shoulder pads are way too flared and I think they kind of look a little distracting. And the rest of the suit for how skin tight it is with the texture makes it look more symbiotic than anything. It honestly makes it look like in this timeline she got a little freaky with Eddie Brock. Outside of the head, I also think that the boots look pretty cool too. There's not a whole lot of positives I have with this one, it just seems a little unfocused if you ask me. So from this point on, the costumes went from bad to meh to now good to great, so let's move on. Speaking of could have been better, we're looking at our first of four costumes from MK11 being the Beauty of the Beast variants. On paper, this design sounds really cool, having a very savagey looking Melina where she's like the ruler of a Tarkat or something like that, being the leader of the Tarkat and army in some weird Mad Maxi world, but in execution, it just looks, well, okay, it just looks fine if you ask me. One of my favorite details is that the suit just looks like it was put together from scraps and pieces. It's also cool to see them implement some scars on this design too. The one issue that I have that glares us back and kind of holds it at the place where it's at comes from the head. To fit this new what if world, they decided to completely change her hair by having one portion of her head completely shaved and having it braided with some stuff put in there. In general, I think it looks kind of cool and it could be fitting for an original character, but it looks a little interesting for Melina. She honestly looks like an EDM producer from the early 2010s. Oh yes, Nick. This one is one of the most unforgettable outfits in my opinion. The leather just works. That purple and brown just complementing each other. All of the little details on the arm of that belt, that gorgeous chain belt piece with like the bones on the back of the pants as well. The sides were awesome. I love the strappiness going on. That neck piece and that face mask with the hair is just perfection. This one is done so beautifully and it just looks comfortable. It looks badass and yeah, a, a win, an absolute win from me. It's an interesting design, but it's not really one that I'll remember. We are kicking in old school and looking at her classic design from her debut, Mortal Kombat 2. For a debut costume, this is pretty okay, honestly. This costume is clearly a product of its time. It really looks like an 80s fitness outfit or some 90s swimsuit model outfit. For how simple it is, it's pretty nice, honestly. The pink color really pops with the environments in Outworld, which were more colorful than they were in Mortal Kombat Classic. Though it's not my favorite of the classic costumes, it stands the test of time and has been featured in many of the recent Mortal Kombat titles. This one to me is a super basic outfit for the time that it came out. It's okay. Uh, it's a little boring, but classic Mortal Kombat days, uh, Elmo's favorite days. So this is fine. At the end of the day, the classic isn't bad at all. 
From debut to latest title, we're looking at Mortal Kombat 1 with the Union of Light variants. Once again, I'm going to apologize that I do not have this costume unlocked for the base color. I haven't grinded out Melina yet. This is a huge Jurassic redesign of the character, but I like a lot of it and some of it eh, I'm a bit mixed on. For starters, I really like the new hairstyle. I even like how they tried to make this outfit a little bit more on the sexy side and armored side looking like she's ready to fight. But when it comes to the color palettes, it's honestly a little bit awkward. Instead of the purple that she's known for, it's very bright pink and white. Along with that, I'm not the biggest fan of the armor piece they use. It honestly makes her come off more mystical and more of like a water warrior or something like that, almost coming right out of Atlantis instead of Edenia or Outworld. Besides that, they made some great attempts. They didn't nail all of it, but it still looks pretty good. At number 14, we're looking at one of the specialty costumes from Mortal Kombat 1, being the Halloween costume for Melina. Similar to what they did with Blizzard King in Mortal Kombat 11 with Sub-Zero, they decided to go with a fun little Halloween take on this one. Looked like she's ripped right out of Silence of the Lambs, she's equipped with a straight jacket that's ripped apart, prison pants, and she even has a mask to cover her mouth, looking like Hannibal Lecter with it. Another favorite detail of mine with this is that it's already coated in blood, meaning that she probably ate somebody before the fight started. Even though Halloween costumes are meant to be just kind of weird and unique and not really meant to fit the character tone, this at least ties a character super well with the correct fit by being inspired by Hannibal Lecter. It's cute, it's fun, and I'm sorry I don't have actual gameplay using this costume. I didn't fork up money to buy this thing when it was in the shop, but I didn't want to forget it and I wanted to include it at number 14. Just moving ahead a little bit at number 13 is the Shiva Ranatai from MK1. This was featured shortly in the Mortal Kombat 1 story mode during the parade scene in Reptiles chapter. Now this costume is really detailed and that's something I love about it. Lots of pretty colors with purple and gold being the two big highlights in this one. I also love that they really tried doing something different with this one, and it really worked out in the end. Sure, it's more of a dress and something you really wouldn't see anyone fight in, but I think it's just a cool design overall, something you rarely see with the Edenian characters. If I had to be honest, my only real complaint is that I really wish we got to see Melina's hair in this one. I do like the hat that she's wearing, but it would have been nice to see some strands of hair come out through the t front or something like that. Overall, a very pretty design from the pretty fighter of the series. After all of this time, at number 12, we are looking at the base design from Mortal Kombat 9. Considered to be one of the fan favorites of the entire franchise, I've always found this one to be good. I always thought it was good. Is it my favorite? No, it's far from it, but I can't deny that it's a good one. This takes a lot of elements from her Deception alternate design, but it really adds a lot to it, which makes it help stand out quite a ton. For one, they added some gold accents to the back of her costume. She has really long gloves that go up to her elbows with long nails attached to them. And though this costume is still pretty busty, it actually kind of matches her personality with her whole, like, crazy but going for like a sexy appeal. Quite possibly my favorite addition to this costume and fun little minor detail is that the veil actually has little fangs on the mask, foreshadowing the tar cotton teeth quite nicely. On top of it, this is when they started making the eyes a huge addition too, making them have that more orange and animalistic look to them. I can see why many people rate this costume really high or they rank it high on their lists, but personally I've preferred many of the other costumes over this one. It really captured the attention of many gamers and M K fans. I'm gonna let you have this one, Nick, because again, my opinion is a little different to yours, but I need to express to you that I do love this outfit, and for the time that it came out, it was really sexy, and it was a really cool way to see Melina in such a classily sexy way, and not so stripper-like, if I must add. So I do respect this outfit in that sense, um, but I can't tell you that it is my favorite, but I do respect your opinion, and I honestly loved being a part of this, so, oh yeah! Pretty cool. And just like that, the rest of the costumes were extremely hard to put in a ranking order. Throughout this entire writing process, which actually is what caused us to take a long time for it to come out, is that I kept switching the order constantly. Many of these tied for placements, and then I would put one over the other, then I'd feel bad and then swap it around, change it. I went back and forth and flip-flopped constantly. But at the end of the day, this is the final ranking that I went with. So without further ado, let's teleport kick into the top 11. Entering number 11 with the ultimate version 
version of Mortal Kombat 3, UMK3. Now this is a solid classic design with her MK3 look. Instead of going with the fitness gear from the MK2 look, they decided to update it quite a ton. The biggest changes include changing the hair to have a bun in it, they opened up the uh, chest a little bit and they add laces to it, the boots are longer and they have a real nice point at the end of them, and the color just pops quite a ton with these. The simple accents really help make it pop quite a ton and it really just stands out. Of the classic ninja designs, these are so unique and I love them a ton. It was a real treat too when they brought this back in Mortal Kombat 11, it instantly became one of my go-to costumes. This one is just an iconic design and it doesn't go out of style. Tell a kicking into the top 10 with Dangerous Allure from Mortal Kombat 11. At first glance, this actually takes a lot of fun takes from the MK2 look, but it's a fun readaptation of it. This includes the right amount of additions to make it pop and to make it into the top 10. Instead of making it a one piece suit, it's two pieces, but it slightly resembles the classic. My favorite addition is how the gauntlets now have claws, which tie heavily into her gameplay. I also love the nice decal and designs to the suit. It actually looks like it was hand sewn. I know there's one big controversy people have with this, and many people aren't the biggest fan of the hair, but if you ask me, I really like it. It actually looks kind of nice and something that she would rock. It slightly resembles her look from MK9 a little bit. I don't really have too many negatives to say with this one. I just think they nailed it. Ooh, this one, Nick. I I adore. I think it is so funky. I love how everything is placed. It's sexy, it's classy, it's enough, and it's absolutely beautiful. So I, I really dig these variants. Now remember, even in combat, dangerous allure can be a fatal distraction. Jumping ahead into the third costume from MK11, being her clone warrior set. Now you may be wondering, isn't this a katana costume? To that I say, you're right, this is actually one of katana's cosmetics in MK11. Hence the name clone warrior, get it? <laughs> and similar to katana, this is a really cool costume. Not only is this a pretty costume with all of the nice cloth pieces to it, but it also seems practical and something you would fight in and with her being nimble with how much light armor there is to the costume. Along with the purple and silver accents, they really pop together and they look really nice. They decided to take the elements from the UMK3 costume with the hair being up in the bun, while also mixing some elements from other costumes such as MKX and even MK Deception in there. See, as we're going through these, the costumes are definitely evolving with Melina. So this set to me is absolute perfection in a sense where it looks like a ninja, it screams Melina, it's very tailored to her personality and her style, and it's very classy. The small little armor pieces really make it pop as well, and I can appreciate that dearly. So this one's a win for me also. In the end, it's a top tier Melina skin. Man, after all of this time, we're finally moving in and looking at Mortal Kombat X. The first of four costumes from this game we're looking at is the Halloween skin, the Vampirus costume. For a Halloween themed costume, they really nailed it with Melina. Instead of going with the typical purple and pink, they decided to go with red, a very evil looking red that really matches her look in this game. My favorite other detail they added is by making her skin more pale, more vampire-like. To even go with the vampire theme, she's not wearing her traditional ninja vest or outworld robes and instead wearing a corset, matching the character even more. Even though the crown is a little bit goofy, it's still nice that they included that on there. I really like this skin so much and honestly, I really wish that this is what they did for Natara in Mortal Kombat 1. Overall, one of the cool takes of doing a vampire costume, loads better than Blood Raiden in Mortal Kombat 11 and better than MK1 Natara. This costume is just that bloody good. Let's stick with Mortal Kombat X again and look at the tournament costume. Even though the tournament costume costumes were meant to be re-adaptations of the MK9 look, the team drastically changed this costume to focus more on practicality instead of making it more eye appealing if you know what I'm saying. And funny enough, I prefer this over her MK9 costume that they're inspiring this off of. It's not as risque as the one they're using, but instead they're adding armor to make it look actually really cool. Of many of the armor based costumes for the time, this was one of my favorites. I like how one half of it just has like the traditional cloth while the other half has a chest plate. One of my favorite details that they did with this costume, along with another MKX costume, is that they made the hair look super crazy, really highlighting the savage side of her. This costume was so cool in fact that Yeliz actually cosplayed this one a while back. Overall, this is one of the more underappreciated costumes from this game. MKX tournament skin Melina is one of my 
my absolute favorite looks ever. It is also one that I cosplayed as well. So when I really resonate with the design, it's something that I absolutely have to cosplay and she bought that out of me in this outfit. So a lot of respect and love for this outfit right here. That's a win for me. I feel like I'm alone on this one coming up, but number six, we're gonna look at her alternate costume for Mortal Kombat 9. Though many people gave her base design more of the attention, I preferred this one over it. It honestly comes off like a readaptation of the base design for Mortal Kombat Deception, sacrificing a lot of the black in the Deception one with purple and pink, and removing the shoulder piece to it. Instead of the tight mask of the MK9 base design head, this has more of that veil but includes big bigger fangs to it, which is something I really liked. On top of that, I also love the ponytail, it just matches this design super well. The boots are also a little bit more simplified, they're now black and they're smaller compared to MK9s, which I also prefer, they're just a little bit more simplified. I also like that they added a cloth to this design behind her, it's just an extra element that really helps make it stand out and pop just a little bit. Yeah sure, it does still focus on the sexy side of the character, but it didn't really come off as being too extra. Similar to the MKX tournament costume, this one I find to be quite underrated. This costume shows off both the beauty and the beast. Speaking of mentioning it earlier, we're entering the top 5 with the base design for Mortal Kombat Deception. For many people, this is in the top 5 or considered the best Melina costume. I can see where you're coming from and I agree. This costume is really good. Instead of super long leggings and long boots, the boots are simplified and they go a little bit below the knee. Instead, they decided to go with something different by making purple the accent and making black the primary color of the top half of this costume. Similar to what they did with the alternate costume in MK9, she has the long sleeves and it's all a one piece that she wears on her top, which looks really cool. On top of that, I also love the veil and how it's slightly transparent. Even though the model of the tar cotton mouth isn't the best, it's still a cool concept that you can see right through it. Not really much to say about this one and I don't really have too many negatives outside the tar cotton mouth. This is just one of the coolest Melina designs to date. Oh geez, the rest of this list was so hard to put together. So at the end of the day, all of these almost could have tied for the best Melina design. Again, at the end of the day, this is the order I went with. So let's continue. We're jumping into the new era one more time at number four with the new era variants of Melina from Mortal Kombat 1. During my reaction trailer for the Mortal Kombat 1 announcement, I did say that this costume was over designed from what I was able to see. Now that I can see this costume in its entirety, this is honestly one of my favorites. This time around, little skin is exposed in this costume, which really breaks the Melina trend. This one actually includes the most amount of color, with burgundy being a big focus on this one. Along with that, the gold accents really pop a ton and make it look really nice. And though it does go a little bit extra with some of the gold accents, I still think it looks really nice and was a great inclusion. The only thing I feel that really could have been omitted is the weird bone thing that's in her ponytail. That's really the only part that's a weird inclusion but it does at least pop a bit with the shaved sides to her head. Yet again, another time they started doing this to the designs. But this time around, I think it looks good. Even though this costume really covered up Melina more than before, it still looks quite attractive, honestly. Just shows you don't have to show a lot of skin to make it look appealing. When I did my ranking video, Nick, I never had an opportunity to talk about this one, but I must let you know that I have to disagree a little bit with this outfit being on the fifth list. I personally would have put this as number three. I love this look so much. When I think about Melina, this is like a new automatic look that I like to see her as. I love the sleekness, all the details and the seams and just the tiny little armor pieces that just complement every single aspect of this outfit is just so respectable to me. I love the strappiness. I love the gold embellishments. I love the headpiece on this one. I could go on and on and on about this one. I adore this outfit very much, and I mean, five's pretty good, but I would have done it a little different. Um, but much respect, you guys. This is one of my new favorite looks of Melina that I, I, I've just gone on and on about, and I can't stop talking about it. So let's move on to the next one. And just like that, Mortal Kombat 1 is wrapped up on this list. We've seen some good, bad, and ugly from this game, but the top three are easily the best Melina costumes to date, which let's enter the top three by looking at her alternate costume from Mortal Kombat X being the condom skin. 
Being her condom skin. Oh man, this costume just looks so awesome. Pink, black, and gold just really complement each other super well in this costume. It's also really cool of all of her costumes from this game. They make this one look super royal where the other two make her look like an absolute savage. Her hair is really well done with a ponytail. She has a crown going over her face with a nice veil. She has gold armor and the clothing just looks really clean. Even with Mortal Kombat 11's color desaturation, this still pops and looks really nice. I really do hope that we get to see this appear in Mortal Kombat 1 as one of Melina's cosmetics, hopefully at a reasonable price, because this deserves to come back. Oof, Kana Melina is absolutely respectable, one of my favorite looks ever. The gold complementing the black and pinkish purple look on her, that breastplate strap thingy-majig leather stuff going on is also a really funky piece that I can't stop looking at as well as that stunning headpiece love this outfit love the detail and it's very impress very Melina so wonderful now I would say this is the best of the condom designs, but there's one that just edges out over this one. And that costume at number two is True Condom from Mortal Kombat 11. Now this is how you do Melina Khan. She really wants to be like Shao Kahn and has a helmet just like his. It's also a really nice mix of all of the previous costumes before it. Adding the cloth piece from the Beauty of the Beast costume, along with adding the armor from the Clone Warrior, including the long gloves from her base design, and just to top it all off, adding that really cool helmet I mentioned a second ago. This is easily one of my favorite costumes they've made for Melina. One of my favorite little fun facts with this costume, if you go into the cosmetics and remove the mask, it kind of resembles Shao Kahn's original concept art when he was supposed to be a Tarkatan. It's really crazy how we can go full circle with stuff like that sometimes. I'm not the only person that thinks this costume is so good. Yaliz actually ranked this as her number one costume, which you can listen to her pointer right here. Oh my god, Nick, I'm gonna ramble again. This outfit is just so Shao kahn -y. It's evil, it's perfection. The colors, the palettes, the armor pieces, the mask, the helmet. I mean, what more can I say? Everything about this is just what I feel like I never needed to know that Melina can look like this and it delivered and it's respected and loved and yeah, I, I need to stop because I'm, I'm gonna go a little crazy here. Now this one just nails the Melina Khan aspect super well, making her look royal and making her look like an absolute savage. But there is just one costume that just edges out over this one. Returning to Mortal Kombat X for our number one spot is her base design from this game. Say what you want about Mortal Kombat X's color desaturation and some of the design choices with the characters, but they really nailed Melina with this one. This design really shows off both the beauty and the monster side of the character super well. As I mentioned earlier, her hair is super messy, which is a great design choice to this one. She's wearing a pink vest with her outfit, which really pops with the color design of this game, and instead they decided to go with armored leggings for this design. Another little thing I like about this is the mask. Instead of it looking like it was made by like the finest people of Outworld, it looks like it was made together with scraps with the weird stitching down the middle, making it come across way more scary than it should have. Now I know many people were complaining about this costume at the time saying it wasn't sexy enough but if you ask me this looks quite attractive as i mentioned earlier you don't have to show skin to make something look pretty overall i think they just nailed it with the mkx design of melina as for now and i know that mortal kombat 1 still getting updates this MKX base design is my favorite Melina costume of all time. So there you have all Melina costumes ranked from the worst to the best. A reminder that my list is not the definitive list, it's just mine and I'd love to hear yours in the comment section down below. I'd also love to give a huge shout out to Jessie Liz for coming in and helping out today. If you don't know who she is, she's an awesome international content creator, cosplayer, and streamer. If you haven't been following her, I'd recommend you doing so. She has some of her own costume rankings that you should also check out. Thank you so so much guys as well from me for watching this and much respect and much love to Nick for having me on the episode today. I also want to add something Nick and I want to say it in front of everyone. You have inspired me with videos like this on my YouTube channel and you've been doing it way longer than me and I love the way that you present it and it's just such an honor to be here with you today to do this at, on your channel, on your video. The person who inspired me to do videos like this. Bless you. I wish you all all the best and all the success and please continue to make videos the way that you do because you inspire and I'm gonna stop the cheese. Thank you so much for watching you guys and uh, hopefully we can do this again Nick. This was great.
Thank you again for joining in on the fun. And speaking of fun, we've got a lot of fun content coming your way. So don't forget to drop a like, subscribe, and share for more great Mortal content. I've been seeing your requests for characters to be covered on this series, along with more content Rain and I should be doing soon. Be on the lookout in the community tab for polls discussing which content should be coming next. All costumes ranked will be one of the big series I'll be working on, along with re-ranks and finisher rankings based off each game. As always, thank you so much for your continuous support. My name is Nick, and have a wonderful rest of your day. Fight.